Nagorno Karabakh is on the headlines again, so it is time to remember and summarize the core of this issue. We will start with geography. If you type Nagorno Karabakh and press search online, you will come across with this description. Region in South Caucasus mostly mountainous and forested. Most of the Western sources does not mention that it is Azerbaijan's territory and it is under Armenian occupation for almost 30 years. Introduction to hypocrisy. Just taking a glance at the map is enough to see how Nagorno Karabakh is carved out from the heart of Azerbaijan. So how did the conflict start? The problem is dating back to 1988. As the Soviet Union began to collapse, Armenia made territorial claims against Azerbaijan. Considering the fact that Azerbaijan declared independence from Soviet Union in 1991, these were difficult times for Azerbaijan since they had economic problems and no regular army. Armenia took this as an opportunity and started to attack to Nagorno-Karabakh with the full support of Christian alliance, of course. In two years, starting from 1991, Armenian forces first occupied Nagorno-Karabakh and then the seven surrounding districts, which means 20% of Azerbaijan's territory and displacement of more than 1 million civilians. Even this was not enough for the occupant. 26 of February 1992, one of the bloodiest pages of the late history, Hojalu genocide. 613 Azerbaijani had been tortured and slaughtered by Armenian forces. They were just civilians, including children. And how did the international community react? Absolutely did nothing. They couldn't say no to neither this genocide nor to Armenian occupation. United Nations has got involved, but failed to implement the resolutions which call on the withdrawal Armenian troops from the occupied Azerbaijani territories. And this is what happened next. Sides of the conflict declared a ceasefire on May 1994, but this ceasefire could never really seize the fire in Nagorno-Karabakh. Four months later, Minsk Group was created by the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe. The goal was to encourage a peaceful, negotiated resolution to the conflict, with the co-chairmanship consisting of Russia, United States and France. Too many negotiating tables, but no action, just words. Words that were easy to tune out for Armenia. April 2016 Fighting broke out again. Armenian forces attacked again but faced with a big disappointment this time. In four-day war, also known as April War, Azerbaijan forces launched a counter-offensive operation and liberated some of its occupied lands after years. Is the conflict only about Nagorno-Karabakh and seven surrounding districts? No, it isn't. Maybe it was up until July 2020, because until that day, conflict was always taking place within the boundaries of occupied territory. But between 12th and 14th of July, Armenia has targeted Azerbaijan's international border in the direction of Tovuz district. Tovuz was not a random choice. The district is strategic. Baku, Tbilisi, Jehan oil pipeline. Southern Gas Corridor, which is starting point of Trans-Anatolian Pipeline, and the joint railway project of Turkey and Azerbaijan that connects Kars and Baku. Tovuz is a junction for all of this. And by carrying the conflict out of the disputed area, Armenia has tried to drag Russia into the clashes regarding the Collective Security Treaty Organization, but failed again. Azerbaijan army has repulsed the attacks. Let's take a look at the supporters of two sides, two big actors on the scene, Russia and Turkey. Turkey's approach towards anything about Azerbaijan is a result of brotherly relationship. Two countries are describing this bound as one nation, two states. Turkey urges Armenia to end occupation immediately. And Russia is Armenia's traditional ally. Starting from early 90s, Moscow never stopped arming Armenia, sometimes through credit agreements, sometimes just by granting. But, on the other hand, Azerbaijan is too precious to neglect for Russia. Moscow does not want to lose Baku totally to the other side, some kind of roam with the hare and hunt with the hounds policy. So, what is the solution? Of course, the solution is ending the occupation. Which countries recognize Armenia's so-called self-proclaimed republic there? The answer is none. Everybody accepts the fact that Nagorno-Karabakh is Azerbaijan's territory. So, 
No conditions, no concessions. Otherwise, as President İlham Aliyev says, İti govan kimi kovurup onları. İti govan kimi Azerbaycan askeri onları kovur. İşgal edilmiş torpağlarda Azerbaycan bayrağı kaldırılır. 